Welcome to San Diego State University. It's great to have you here. I'm Jeff Chase. I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Studies. And I have the uh, privilege of having the responsibility for the Honors Program. It's in my division of the university, but it's really our division. Uh, and what you're going to hear today is really our message and our energy and our commitment to education and to all of you. Uh, it's great that you could come today to hear about the program. Um, you represent an extraordinary set of students looking at San Diego State University today. Uh, your scores, your grades, your essays, your commitment to community service have all placed you in a very, very special, special population. It's a population that we at San Diego State think we do a great job with. We also know that you, as students or future students, make us even stronger. So this is really about a relationship that goes two ways. And as I said, it's great to have you here today. Um, I am going to kick off the program. I'm not going to say much more, uh, because the real stars of the show uh, are lined up over here. They're the students who will be, uh, will be speaking to you. And as any student knows, when a student, another student tells you something, it's true. When somebody <laughs> else tells you something, eh, maybe, maybe. But I also want to, uh, before we get to the students, I want to introduce uh, somebody who's uh, incredibly important to this uni university uh, in helping the honors program and helping the Division of Undergraduate Studies and in really leading the academic side of San Diego State University. Uh, Nancy Marlin is our provost. She has been a provost uh, since 1998. She has done a remarkable job at San Diego State University uh, we are uh, one of the universities uh, that is being watched nationally uh, because of our research capability, because of our honors program, because of what we're doing with graduation rates, but because of our diversity, because of our international commitment. And she has been the cheerleader, the supporter, the leader, and the visionary behind almost all of those activities. And it's a privilege to me to work with her, and it's a privilege for me to introduce her to you this afternoon, Nancy Marlin. I hate, I, I hate standing behind podiums, so I hope this is going to work because they've taped this down so I can't easily move it. Um, first of all, welcome. You're all really smart, but you're apparently not all good at RSVPing because we had more people <laughs> show up today than we're anticipating. So I, I first of all apologize that um, it is standing room only, but it is wonderful to see so many people here. I just want to talk a little bit about the honors program from my perspective and why I'm so proud of this program. Honors programs, as you know, are for students who want more academic challenge, and of course we provide that in a myriad of ways. You're going to hear about uh, the classes that are designed to be more challenging, they're smaller, they allow for a lot of academic challenge, integrity, inquiry, lots of aspects that w are engendered by small classes, highly interactive, working with wonderful faculty and, and student colleagues. But if all you take away from a university experience is going to class, you've missed an enormous amount about a university experience. And that's where we've put the honors program in so many ways to integrate that experience outside of the classroom. First of all, the immediate part of outside the classroom is our honors students live together in an honors hall. They also have an honors lounge that is a very popular, very crowded place as, as I often go by. But we take the real strengths of academic affairs at San Diego State and infuse that within the honors program. And the two strengths I want to mention were referenced are international activities and our research activities. San Diego State University is a very unusual institution in that we are the only research university within the Cal State system. We have a great devotion to teaching and to our students' education. At the same time, we're a research university, so we merge both of those. You'll hear from students that they're working on undergraduate research. 
they're in the lab, they're in the archives, they're in the field with faculty actually discovering information, not just hearing about in class. And that is an extraordinary moment when you know something that nobody else in the world does about your field. And our students in the honors program do that. And then they write papers on it, they're co-authors, they give presentations. They do all the things people want from students in terms of communication, working in teams, um, being able to really write persuasively. The second part is our international activities. San Diego State University, this is a hallmark of our education because so much of us, so many of us, so fervently believe that the world in which our students are going to be living and working, they need that experience as part of a quality education. So as part of the honors program, there's a required study abroad. And again, it isn't just we tell students, well, go out and find something. We have a study abroad advisor within the honors program. We, we help students work on something that meets their academic and career goals, that they can put that within their, their international experience. So we're taking the real strengths of the entire university within our honors program. And as was mentioned, um, I mean, I can talk about it for quite some time because I'm so proud of the program. I'm so proud of our students. But the real people who will be able to explain to you what this program is about and the influence it's had on their lives are our students. So I think we're going to hear from just one more of us speaking for a moment. And then we'll get to the real students. Thank you. We're teasing you a lot about these students you're going to hear from. Uh, good afternoon. Yes. Uh, welcome again to the Honors Prospective Student Reception. Uh, can you all hear me in the back? Yes. yes? Thumbs up for, OK, great. I'm Stacy Sinclair. I'm director of the Honors Program. And I'm delighted to meet you all today and thrilled that you're going to get to learn more about our program. It's hard not to be struck by the incredible amount of people in the room today. Um, I think it's actually quite remarkable to have so many bright and motivated students and bright and motivated parents assembled in one place together. Um, I've chosen to see this as um, match this kind of large attendance today, matching the phenomenal energy and the exceptional opportunities that await you here in the honors program. Uh, we truly appreciate all the hard work um, that you've put into being accepted into the honors program. It's no easy feat, right? Um, you certainly represent a highly accomplished group. I actually uh, ran some figures this morning um, on your students, uh, on your um, qualifications, and your average GPA is over a 4.0, over a 4.0, and your average math and verbal SAT score is over 1250. How about a round of applause for that accomplishment? Our hope today is really that this reception allows you to see firsthand the benefits of the program, but also so you can see how successful our students have been in meeting the requirements of the program. For example, you'll hear today our students talk about our distinctive honors courses that make up the honors minor in interdisciplinary studies. You'll hear the students talk about how their honors classes are distinct and unique from their non-honors classes. You'll also hear our students talk about study abroad, which has been mentioned is a core component of the honors program. We also require our students to get engaged on campus. So you're going to hear our students talk about some of the events and some of the organizations that they are a part of um, at the university. Another purpose today is we want you to begin to feel at home on campus. And so towards this end, we really encourage you to attend tomorrow's university's open house from 9 to 2. And as part of the open house, you can actually tour Maya Hall, which is home of the Honors Residential College. And in a few minutes, you're going to hear several students talk about their experiences living in Maya Hall this year and last year, and how they forged really powerful bonds with the other Honors peers living in the hall. Speaking of bonds, I have to acknowledge the honors team. Uh, we're really proud of the personal service and attention that we give the students. So I'd like to just briefly acknowledge um, Jessica Savala, who is our administrative coordinator of the program. <laughs> and Chaitna Acharya, who is our academic advisor. 
Okay, so in terms of kind of what you can expect uh, for the next part of uh, this afternoon with us together, just to give you um, a sense of what's coming, you are going to hear from current honors program students about some of the features of the program. We really feel strongly that our students are the best representatives, um, but we do want to point out, we hope that you notice how diverse our students are. Diverse in their class level, in their majors, where they're from, and in their interests, because we really value this diversity and think it, it strengthens our program uh, considerably. You're also going to hear from a faculty member who teaches in the honors program and who is the faculty in residence for Maya Hall and who's leading a honors sponsored study abroad program to Florence, Italy this summer. Um, and then at three o'clock, we will convene outside for about a half an hour to have some light refreshments. And that's really a great time for you all to get to um, know us a bit more, mingle, ask us some questions. And then at 3.30, we'll convene um, in separate groups, parents, family and siblings of students, you're going to come back into this room where you'll hear from parents of current honor students and staff from two other offices on campus. And then prospective students here in the audience, you're gonna stay outside and you're gonna have the conversations that you wanna have but you don't wanna have in front of mom and dad with our current students and you'll get to meet, uh, meet each other. So um, I think at this point we are actually ready to uh, begin and we're gonna have our very first student speaker, Michaela Samuels. Hello, everyone. Is it on? Don't you oh, thank you. Um, my name is Michaela Samuels. I am originally from San Diego. I am majoring in hospitality and tourism management with an emphasis in hotel operations and management. And I am, of course, a part of the honors program. It's actually really weird standing up here because I was sitting here just last year. And I was sitting just in the second row with my mom. And it was funny because uh, right when the speakers started coming up and the students started speaking, my mom like leaned over to my ear and she's like, hey, Michaela, you know, next year you could be up here speaking in front of these students. <laughs> I was like, mom, I would never do that. But here I am. Choosing which college to go to is one of the toughest decisions that you guys will have to make. When looking at my choices, I was accepted into Santa Clara University, USD, UC Irvine, and UCSD. And it was because of this honors program that I decided to come to San Diego State. When I was looking for colleges, I wanted a very small college feel. I went to a very small high school and I loved the idea of knowing all my friends in my classes. I loved the idea of having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my teachers. And when I went to this reception last year, I learned about these small class sizes. I learned about these professors that you do have these relationships with. And I wanted this home away from home, which is what I got. Thanks. <laughs> When you go to college, you hear from a lot of other people that you get in this class with 500 people and uh, you just have your professor lecture and then you see them next week and you're just basically a number in the classroom. But that's not the case in the honors program. The classes are capped at 20. I'm in a class right now, Honors 275, which is called New Media and New Europe. We watch these amazing European films and discuss the political, social, and historical aspects to them. We're not just memorizing the dates of the history. We are actually discussing them in a different way according to the films that are portrayed in the class. You have endless resources in the honors program. You have this, the study lounge, which is right here. You have a different part of the library. You have a homey environment and faculty that truly care about you. Even outside of the honors classroom, you have the faculty that you can talk with about anything. Um, they know you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. They'll come in, you know, how did this job go? How did this interview go? You know, they ask, they truly know you and care about you and want to know how you're doing. The honors program not only prepares you for how to succeed in the classroom and in college, but it also helps you in real life scenarios that you will encounter throughout your college life as well as in your professional career. For instance, you learn the do's and don'ts of the interview process. This has helped me numerous times for interviews, for scholarships, as well as for jobs. Learning these skills from the Honors 100 course that you guys will all take next year, you learn, um, you learn just like the interview process itself, and this has helped me only in the first semester uh, receive three different scholarships, as well as get an interview at the W Hotel downtown San Diego. They also help you build your own resume, because trust me, you will have numerous times where you guys are going to have to send resumes to employers for scholarships, etc. The networking is also very, very important. You will meet so many people throughout this program, both related to the university as well as your professional career. 
For example, I was uh, selected to attend a lunch with Paul Jacobs, the CEO of Qualcomm, along with President Hirschman of San Diego State and six other students. In cases like these, you want to know how to network with these professionals, not only in speaking, but also eating, which you really don't <laughs> think is, <laughs> is that important, but it really is. You need to know how to look professional and be professional along with eating, which is the dining <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> it's a lot harder than it thinks. Um, most importantly, the, um, you need to know how to be professional, whether that means you, something simple as changing your email from surfgirl101 to your first and last name, or how to dress professionally and you learn all these things in the Honors 100 class. Besides the CEO of Qualcomm, as a part of my major, I was also able to meet with the president of Disneyland, the manager of Marriott San Diego Marquis and Marina, the CEO of Jack in the Box, the VP of Hotel Del Coronado, and so many more. And this, all these things that you learn in the Honors 100 class prepares you for that type of interaction. And all of these concepts has made me a much more professional and mature person, not only in the professional life, but also in my social aspect. Considering the size of this university, it is amazing the opportunities you receive and the people that you meet right from the beginning of the year. You instantly bond with so many other people and all these people who do so many things. The honors program creates such a great diversity with different people. You learn about different cultures, instruments, instruments, different interests, sports, hobbies. There's so many things and so many different people that you instantly bond with. There is such a sense of community surrounding the honors program. I think it's truly amazing. In the honors dorms Maya, you have hall dinners and hall activities. In this picture, this is a lot of my floor going ice skating before Christmas. These are the people you will be constantly with from the moment you wake up to the moment that you go to sleep at night. There's late night studying, movie nights. Um, the doors are always open. That's what I love about Maya. You, know, you can just say hello to whoever you want. You know everyone. All the doors are always open. And the honors program puts you in a situation where you will meet so many people, whether it will be in your dorms, events, meetings, classes, that you will find yourself walking to class, like saying hi to like five different people, and you're just like, what the heck? But <laughs> I mean, it's amazing considering that there are thousands of other students, and you, you know so many people and have this close knit with so many people. I'm not up here talking to you guys about this because I'm forced to. I'm here because I truly believe in this, <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe a little. <laughs> I'm here because I truly believe in this program and what it can do for all of you. This is the best decision that I have made for myself, and I, I'm so happy here, and I can easily dedicate that all to the honors program. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you guys hear me in the back? Good. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Anthony Rodriguez. Um, I am a freshman studying biology with an emphasis in cellular and molecular biology. I'm also focused on pre-med. About a year ago from today, I was in your shoes. Like, like Michaela, we were both in this exact lecture hall. I did not know what to think of college or where my college career would take me. But one year later, I'm talking to you. I'm happy to reflect on one of the best experiences I've had at the university so far. And this is living in the, in the, Maya, in, in the Maya Hall, the Maya Honors Residential Hall. I'm here to elaborate on the unique experience of living on campus at San Diego State University through the University Honors Program. And lastly, I'll teach you how you can use these th key, th key three themes of interacting, impacting, and inspiring while you're at the university. First off, who, wanna, who wouldn't want to live in San Diego? I'm a, born and, <laughs> I'm a born and raised San Diego, and I'm proud of my city. I'm so glad it got sunny today. Um, and it's a great feeling when you wake up and you look outside your window and there's sunshine. And the sunshine brings a lot of students like myself outside to just chill, relax, uh, study, practice sports, um, all things, and just mingle with your other, um, other peers. And second, when you're in my, you connect and build friendships uh, with the people you're living with. Um, my is a melting pot of diversity, as Dr. St. Clair said. You meet people from different ethnicities, different races, different ways of life, and different cultures. And not only are they diverse, they're also your classmates. Um, I guarantee you, you'll find someone in the exact same class as you, or even the same major as you. And we all work together, communicate, study together, so we can all achieve academic success. But not just academics, but also the, your lifelong friendships. So these three guys over there, um, I've only known them for a couple months, but I feel like I've known them for years, honestly. They're my best friends, and for the, and for the people I know in the, is in the residential hall I couldn't put in this PowerPoint, I'm very grateful that I met them in Maya. Um, 
and you just eat together, you study together, you breed together, uh, um, all things. Um, I'm just so gr grateful I had this experience. Um, my third point kind of ties with the second point, how when you excel in Maya, you're with like-minded individuals. And I'm talking to you students in the audience. You guys are the cream of the crop. You guys are uh, going above and beyond other students, excelling in academics, extracurriculars, arts, um, leadership, service, all these things. And, and I applaud you for that. And when you're in Maya, you're surrounded by the like-minded individuals with the same interests, and you all want to achieve the same goal. And lastly, there's no excuse not to get involved in organizations and um, just activities on campus. Everything is 10, 15 minute walking distance and it's all at your fingertips. And for me, this is how I got, uh, I got involved on campus. And for me, it was joining the uh, SDSU ambassadors. Um, and I'll talk about that in, later on. Honors keeps you linked. Um, like I said, you stay conveniently close on campus. Uh, can't, I can't emphasize that enough. But with the honors program, it's a mentorship and intentional guidance that lasts you all four years. Um, uh, the staff, I'm so glad I'm going to be able to work with them all four years, make those one-on-one -on -one connections, and just they want you to go above and beyond, achieve what you want to do. Um, and all, all these students are working with them, and they're all uh, achieving just that. And just a special shout out to Jessica Savala. Um, if it wasn't for her vision and letter of recommendation, I would not be an SCSU ambassador, so I thank you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, when you're part of the university honors program, you create that competitive advantage against uh, other students. I know it sounds like a little bit of competition, but you can't say this about other organizations. That first day of school, you're already a part of a prestigious organization right when you walk on campus. And with the Honors 100, you get, you get to know about campus opportunities and programs that other students won't. And so it's just a great resource here in the Honors program. So uh, a little bit about SDSU ambassadors to conclude. Um, they are the official student representatives, uh, orientation leaders, and tour guides. So I'll be working that awesome Explore SDSU tomorrow. So if you find me, uh, please feel free to say hi. Um, and so I'm just, gonna, and I'm just gonna leave you with a little wisdom and a little fun fact that a quarter of the new 2012 ambassadors, including myself, are part of the University Honors Program. Um, so our slogan with the uh, SDSU ambassadors is to interact, impact, and inspire. Sound familiar? Um, so I'm gonna leave you with this. First, you need to interact with your peers. Make those academic connections and those lifelong fr friendships because they'll last you a lifetime. Second, impact the SDSU community with that honors approach of glo global, critical, and well-rounded thinking. And last, finally inspire others to maximize their potential at the university and start your legacy SDSU legacy with honors. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me in the back? Thumbs up, thumbs down. OK, thank you. Um, my name is Candace Hill. Um, I'm an international business major with an emphasis in Spanish for Latin America. Um, I'm a junior here at, Uni at San Diego State University, of course, and I'm from Hemet, California. Does anyone know where Hemet is? Holla, hey, okay, Riverside County, so not that far. Um, and of course, I'm part of the University Honors Program. Um, today I'm going to be talk about, talking about um, how the honors program is a pathway to academic success and leadership on our campus and also in all your future endeavors as well. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the honors culture. Um, it, the honors classes are very interactive and discussion based and they encourage our students to think outside of the box and create to come up with creative solutions to problems. Um, they challenge our way of thinking in every way um, so that you're not only thinking as you did before you came to the university, you're thinking in different ways, through different contexts, through different perspectives, and just a way to kind of um, encourage yourself 
to be diverse in, your, in not only your actions, but your thinking as well. Um, the classes focus on current real world issues. Um, and with the discussions, they're an open embracing environment that encourage even the shyest students to contribute to the discussions and not be afraid to express their ideas. Um, for example, I took a class last semester. It was called Honors 275, Humanity's Journey Towards Evil or Hope. And this class really sparked my interest in social justice. We talked about refugees in the United States, where they came from, what they've been through. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with the current issue right now of the Coney 2012 movement and the social awareness, um, the protests that are going on, and also how it's a big issue also on social media. There's a lot of Facebook and Facebook groups and Twitter, Twitter training topics about this issue, and it's just a big issue right now. And our class was talking about this exact same thing last semester and talking about the refugees and talking about Coney and the movements and the invisible children and everything that's going on over there. And I just thought that was really interesting and it really just sparked my interest in social justice personally. Um, and also, as a, a couple of my former students said, how the classes are really small. You really do get that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your faculty and your professor. And this is the people that are future recommendation letters. These are future references for students to take advantage of. Um, so that's just, they also, that's a really good thing. And they also provide insight for scholarship and internship opportunities as well. So it's really something that you can develop a strong relationship with your staff and faculty, and that's really unique with the honors program. I'm also going to talk about the honors resources and how honors provides a personal academic and study abroad um, advisor for the, our students. And they guide us in our academic path and keep us, not, keep us on track not only to graduate on time, but also to get the best undergraduate experience possible here at SDSU. We have the Honor Student Lounge in our administration building, and that includes exclusive computer and printer access for our Honor students. And there's also um, couches for study areas as well. And also there's an Honor Student Room in the library that only we have access to as um, University Honors Program students, so we're the VIPs in the library. And it just really comes in handy, especially during finals time, midterms time, when the, the library is jam-packed. There's always that room in the library that you know only the University Honors Program students have access to, and you can always utilize that as a resource. So that's something that's always a go-to for me during midterms and finals time. And like I said, I'm going to talk about how honors, the Honors Program helps you develop unique and positive leadership skills um, and levering honors, your honors into leadership. Um, currently, I am the Honors Council representative um, for the Associated Student Council. And just a little bit about Associated Student Council. It's basically what you guys know as ASB, but think about ASB with millions of dollars of a budget. That's basically what the Associated Students Council is. and. Um, it's the governing body on campus, and we represent the, each college um, on this university, the college councils, and also the student organizations. So I'm the Honors Council representative for that. Um, excuse me. And basically, it was a way that I could experience shaping policies and networking with the university administration. For example, if you see that picture up there, it's. Um, the Chris, it looks like a Christmas card. That was when the council had the chance to um, eat dinner at the president, at President Hirschman's house, and he made a Christmas card out of all of the council and him and his wife taking a picture. And it was, it was just a real amazing experience. Miss, the provost was there, Nancy was there. So it was just really awesome, and it was just a way that I could um, network and use my honors to develop leadership skills. And just as a neat fact, when the president, when President Hirschman wants students to represent the student body here at San Diego State, he always looks to Dr. Sinclair as his first person to call because he wants University Honors Program students. So that's something very interesting about it. Um, 
Oh, and also, um, I'm also a part of Aztec Pride, which works with the president's office to support philanthropy. Um, it is elite group. It's an elite group of student representatives within the student body that represent him at various events and may, whether it be a building dedication or whether it be a scholarship reception, that's something that the student, student pride representatives do. So I also got to be a part of that, which is great. And um, just as something else neat, because of the honors program and my involvement, I actually got to name a room in the new Aztec Student Union that will be opening in fall of 2013. And that's all the wonderful, convenient construction that you see outside. And um, just to wrap it up, I just wanted to talk about how the honors program does set you up for success. Um, not only does it keep you motivated and accountable with the GPA re requirement, um, that's for us to excel here at the university as well as qualify for other honor societies because there's various other honor society opportunities. As you see these banners, these are additional honor societies that you can qualify for because of this requirement that the university honors program keeps us accountable to. Um, for example, not only am I a peer mentor in the university honors program, but I'm also an, uh, the official liaison for Golden Key Honor Society and I'm a representative for Phi Eta Sigma Freshman Honor Society, as well as a member of Phi Kappa Phi and Scholars Without Borders. So as you can see, there's various other ways to get involved with honor, honor societies because of the university's honors program. And it helps you be a more competitive candidate because it does embrace diverse thinking and encourage diverse experiences through the study abroad requirement and the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary minor, excuse me. Um, basically, I leveraged the leadership skills I required, um, I required in the um, University Honors Program and the interest in social justice that was ignited by the class that I took last semester that I already mentioned to obtain a paid position with the district attorney with the district attorney's office in the victims assistance program. So that kind of combined the social justice that I got from the class and also the leadership skills that I acquired from the university honors program as well. Um, yeah, so just overall, the university honors program and the culture, um, the requirements, and the way that it promotes the development of leadership skills um, by providing numerous opportunities for students. The University Honors Program is a pathway for SDSU students to achieve an academic success and to amplify their leadership skills. Hi, hello, my name is Clarissa Claw. I am, as you can see from the uh, screen here, I'm Associate Professor of Italian and uh, also the director of the Italian program here at San Diego State uh, that's in the Department of European Studies. I uh, am also a faculty in residence in Maya and Olmeca, which is the uh, complex, uh, the residence hall complex where Maya is located and where the honors uh, students uh, are going to be housed. And uh, I've lived there uh, for three years. This is my uh, third and last year because the appointment is only up to three years. And I live there with the students and with my family. My partner and I have uh, a little girl, she's four. And uh, you know, I told the provost once, uh, you see the logo of the university here, and uh, whenever uh, my daughter sees the logo, she says, home, that's home. <laughs> uh, so pretty much her life was spent uh, uh, so far here on campus. Um, so we live with the students. And uh, the role of the faculty in residence uh, in, uh, in the building is basically organizing academic program and working with the student staff uh, in making sure that, uh, uh, you know, like there are um, programs that are of interest and that serve uh, the students. So, we do organize, uh, uh, the first one we do is called Professors Don't Bite, because we do want students to uh, come and talk to, uh, to us, approach us, and be comfortable doing this and reach out. Um, but we also organize a number of other programs, uh, and one that I do is, uh, guess what, study abroad. <laughs> Sounds like, uh, uh, did I mention that I'm Italian? Uh, uh, obviously the accent. 
Um, so we do, we do work a lot with, uh, with the students. We do take field trips when we are, uh, you know, as part of the residence um, experience as well. Um, the past couple of years, I've taken students to Balboa Park, to the Museum of Photographic Arts, to the Old Globe. We do try to involve students that way. And obviously, this is open to the uh, honor students you know, residing in Maya as well as the other one. Because I do think that what's important is that, of course, with the honors experience, you get an exclusive experience, but you don't want to get too exclusive. It's important to mingle with other students as well. Um, and I think that they do get a lot of this exposure uh, in, the, um, in the residence halls. I answered, I also taught a university seminar, uh, an honors seminar, and I do want to uh, talk about this a little bit. A couple of um, Years ago, I answered the call that was sent out from the honors program, encouraging faculty from around the university to apply for um, to teach a class. And because all of the classes that I teach in my program are in Italian, uh, except for the Italian American culture uh, class, but. The classes, and you know, I certainly want to recommend that you take uh, language classes uh, that are not as big as uh, the 500 lecture halls uh, 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 classes. But anyways, I answered because I wanted to, um, you know, also teach in English and teach to something that, uh, you know, basically I'm a specialist of uh, contemporary Italy. And I did want to have that experience teaching also in, uh, in English. And I proposed a course called Boot Loose uh, on Italian migrations in literature, film, and popular culture. And um, you know, the, cor uh, the course was accepted, and I'm so thrilled because I kind of they recruited me, and I certainly am not going to leave now uh, because <laughs> I uh, really got a very um, got a wonderful experience. It was an interdisciplinary course that's part of the type of academic work that I do. Um, it was examining the you know, sort of the cultural history of Italian immigration abroad, especially in the United States, as well as the recent immigration into Italy. But what I was most interested in was trying to do, to organize as many guest speakers, as many field trips as possible, and that of course was also allowed because of, the, of a generous grant that I got by being accepted and teaching in the program. And uh, one of the things that we did, for instance, was uh, to collaborate with uh, the Department of Geography, which has a project right now that's called uh, uh, Preserve Little Italy. So what we did, we took a field trip in Little Italy uh, one uh, uh, Saturday morning. So you do have extra, you know, it's not only in the classroom. We went and we, um, the professor of geography took us around. It was a guided tour, pointed out different landmarks. And uh, at the same time, we were reading a book that's been just recently uh, republished called uh, Confetti for Gino that was talking about the Italian-American experience in San Diego's Little Italy in the 1950s. So we were going sort of around and, and looking at landmarks with that on our, uh, you know, in our hands. And then we had a series of lectures as well related to that. But most importantly, what we did at the end of the semester, we continued to, to work on this project and their fine, the students' final project was about analyzing videos that uh, this professor of geography had uh, um, and the interviews that, that he had made with uh, old-time residents of Little Italy. So really what the students did was basically lend their, the expertise that they had acquired at the end of the by the end of the semester and for something that was then going to be a project and it's going to be online, this is uh, also uh, a several uh, hundred thousand dollars that they have with the Little Italy Association going. And their expertise is going to go on the online and it's going to be part of this project as well. Not exactly service learning, but was very close to that, very close to sort of trying to connect the dots with what you do in the classroom and what is you could potentially uh, learn and contribute, because that's really the point, that you're going to go back and contribute to society. That's why you're here. And uh, so part of that, and then we took another field trip. Uh, there was a day long uh, by bus, so there was uh, plenty of bonding opportunities there. Uh, we went up to the um, Watts Towers in Los Angeles, uh, where 
Um, there's a ta those towers were designed uh, and created by an Italian immigrant. We spent the entire day there. We did have uh, um, a guided tour of the towers. We did have uh, an on-site lecturer that talked to us about that. Um, so, and other, you know, other, um, let's say, you know, guest speakers opportunity, other opportunities where I, I brought in documentary filmmakers that uh, talked about some of the films that they had done about the Italian-American experience. We talked about home movies as well as a very important part of uh, that experience. So um, I do hope that the students got a certainly uh, well-versed, uh, um, you know, uh, idea of uh, the richness of uh, the ethnic experience, um, in this case, obviously, of Italian-Americans, but it seems to me that it's been clearly illustrated that it's really a diverse experience. Um, lastly, I do want to talk about uh, the study abroad portion of uh, um, my involvement with the honors program. This year, I'm going to uh, take a group of about 20 students to Florence. Uh, we'll be gone for six weeks, uh, but who knows if it's only going to be only six weeks. Um, it's uh, going to be a study abroad that I'll be teaching two courses. I will be teaching Italian civilization, and uh, the other course, again, in line with what my expertise is, um, we're going to look at representations of Tuscany in uh, cinema, in, the, in, in movies, and I'm sure you can come up with a couple of movies that uh, are set in Florence or, or, are, or in Tuscany that sort of reflect uh, that. And we're going to be thinking critically about the role of uh, tourists or of cultural travelers uh, during, our, um, during our travel. We're going to be visiting the Uffizi and all of that. Um, obviously, uh, this is a big pitch to think about going and studying abroad. You won't have an option because I know you have to have to take the study abroad. But I mean, obviously, Florence is an important, um, you know, an opportunity that you may have. And I did want to also take uh, uh, just one, uh, a few seconds to to thank the staff uh, of the uh, the um, of the program because. Uh, um, this, uh, it, I've, I've, I have a little bit of experience with uh, the university, and I can definitely tell you that the staff is absolutely professional, trained, well organized, starting from Dr. Sinclair, but also Jessica Savala, Kerry uh, Sable, that I worked, uh, I'm working with for uh, the study abroad program. Really well put together, and obviously it's a pleasure to work with the students. I mean, how can I not uh, mention the fact that the students are clearly, you guys are overachievers. Let's admit it right there, <laughs> that they are overachievers. And uh, um, it's a pleasure. I mean, they really responded well to uh, being challenged. I mean, all of the students that were in my class did not know, or really were not familiar with Italian history but took it really well and uh, uh, did a lot of, uh, um, you know, had a lot of insights that enabled me as a professor to actually reflect back on, on, on some of the material that I've been teaching for, uh, for some time. Um, so it was a pleasure as well. Uh, do wanna, again, uh, thank you and I'll, uh, if you're coming through a tour of uh, Maya tomorrow, um, you see me standing there in front of the building, <laughs> say hi, um, thank you. Can everybody hear me? Is it loud enough? Good. We're too tall for this. Okay. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Kyle Haas. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about you or to you about myself um, and the Maya residence halls. Don't worry about this guy. Uh, it'll make more sense in a little bit. But uh, I'm, an I'm a sophomore accounting major uh, here at State. And interestingly enough, I'm also from Hemet. And I do not know Candace, which doesn't make any sense, because if you live in Hemet, you know everyone in Hemet. So it was kind of an awe right now. Um, but we'll, have to, we'll discuss that after. Um, and I'm also a proud representative of the Honors Program, um, honest, or obviously. But uh, what you don't know about me is I'm an academic mentor in Maya. And you're probably asking yourself, what is an academic mentor? An academic mentor is someone that has at least a one year of collegiate experience um, they live amongst the residents in the halls, um, and they're also in high academic standing. 
there are only a handful of academic mentors all throughout SDSU, and Maya has access to six of them. Um, mentors like myself provide tutoring, advice, accountability, mentorship, role modeling, friendship, um, whichever uh, you desire. And I meet personally with every resident each semester to discuss anything from maybe their academics to their classes, uh, how they're studying, uh, if they've met any friends yet. Because um, I know that is, that's important for a lot of incoming students. They're very nervous about you know, getting to know people and uh, meeting friends. And Maya's a great place to do that. So maybe you're unsure about how to register for classes, or you're unsure about how to study, or uh, like I said, maybe you're a little bit lonely. You can always come talk to an academic mentor like myself. We live right in the halls um, amongst the freshmen. Uh, academic mentors are put in place to provide uh, a role model uh, for freshmen that can supply them with the information and tools they need to know to succeed. Um, a little personal story is my academic ma uh, mentor last year, he's actually the guy in the bottom right corner. Uh, his name was Timmy. He was a huge inspiration to me. Um, I, I would ask him uh, anything ranging from how to study or maybe we'd just be talking at 3 in the morning um, about his interesting life in Bangladesh or whatever it may be. You get all kinds of experiences in the halls, but uh, he was a huge inspiration for me to uh, apply for this job. And um, I also have to thank the Honors Program for even giving me the opportunity uh, to apply for something like this. It was a huge competitive advantage uh, when I applied to be an academic mentor that I had the University Honors Program um, on my resume. Another perk that you get for living in Maya is the Star Study Lounge. Um, similarly to like the Honors Office and the Office in the Library, uh, it's a great place to study, it's quiet, but uh, the Star Study Lounge is right in Maya. You literally go downstairs um, and there's uh, couches, tables, computers, whatever you need. Um, but if I didn't mention it, uh, it's on there. Uh, free printing. I, you don't understand how important free printing is until you get to college. Uh, you literally have to print something every day, I feel like. And if you're looking to save a little money on ink, you can go down to the Star and Center um, and print it up. I know that uh, I still use the Star Center almost every day for the free printing. Um, it's a huge advantage. And if, you're, and if you're not looking to study or use the internet or print, you can always go down there and meet some people. I guarantee at any time you'll find at least five or ten honor students in there hanging out, um, browsing the internet, laying on the couches, whatever it may be. Um, but what you'll... Uh, what you, you'll, uh, so excuse me. Oh, although I spend a lot of time in the uh, honors study lounge and with my students and with the honors program, um, what you don't know about me is that I'm still a diehard Aztec fan. Uh, what you see on the screen is a picture of uh, our student section at the basketball games, uh, or as we've been named, the show. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the show, we're probably the craziest crowd on this side of the Mississippi. Um, and I've had a chance to be a part of it, and it's, it's an uh, amazing experience. The show is notorious for their I Believe That We Will Win chant. Um, I would love to do it with you, but it gets a little rowdy. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's, it, it's really an uh, unreal experience. And the I Believe That We Will Win chant has almost become a school slogan. It's even on our commercials uh, that SDSU uh, has this pride, and we believe that we will win and achieve at everything that we do. Um, and it really shows in our academics, uh, our sports, and um, every other aspect. Uh, as many of you know, our basketball team has now been to two, or four, actually four straight uh, Mountain West championship appearances. Uh, we were Mountain West champions this year. Uh, unfortunately, we lost this morning uh, to an unfavorable matchup to UNC, or no, NC State. Um, it was a good game, but I, I don't think uh, NC State should have been an 11 seed, to be honest. Um, <laughs> But we played well, and we, this is supposed to be a rebuilding year, and we made the tournament and won the Mountain West, so uh, pro props to the team, but we'll have a lot of guys back next year. Uh, not to mention the women's team, which is Mountain West champions, so we're pretty much good at every sport, to be honest. Uh, football, <laughs> two straight bowl games. Uh, we hadn't won a bowl game uh, in 41 years, and we won a bowl game last year, and we lost a bowl game this year on the last second kick with a uh, terrible call, in my opinion. <laughs> that happens once every thousand years, so um, it is what it is. But you know, it's because of the honors program that I was even able to attend events like this. Uh, I was encouraged uh, by fellow honor students and staff to go, and they offer event credit uh, for going to events like this. And it's at events like this that I met my friend Cameron, who was speaking with you next. Um, Cameron and I have actually taken every honors class together. Uh, we push each other academically. We're both business majors. Um, the, the list goes on, but uh, he'll tell you more about that. And uh, You know, I really am proud to be an Aztec, a member of the University Honors Program. 
uh, to be an academic mentor. And many of you will probably see me around tomorrow in Maya if you're touring the building. Uh, you can always come say hi. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Cameron. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kyle. My name is Cameron Menes. I'm, I'm born and raised right here in San Diego. I'm, I'm a sophomore here at San Diego State studying business and finance. And I'll be discussing the unique opportunities that the University Honors Program has presented to me. So first, I'd like to talk about what Dr. Clo was talking about, Doc, um, Honors 275, which was Italian migrations. Um, it, it was a discussion of Italian-American Italian culture, Italian-American history. But what I love most about this course was that Dr. Clo supplemented the coursework with many field trips, as she discussed. My favorite was the field trip up to the Watts Towers up in LA. And Sabato Rodia was an Italian-American immigrant, and he actually dedicated most of his life, about 30 to 40 years, to building these towers. And they're made from completely recycled materials, like glass, bottles, whatever he could find. And so it really relates to the sustainability drive of, of SDSU, as well as the University Honors Program. And another thing I enjoyed was that we actually got to meet the directors of Panamaro, which is one of the most successful Italian-American documentaries of all time. And these directors, they were actually prior teachers, so they really challenged us to think hard and, and ask questions critically. And because of my success and involvement with the University Honors Program, along with the recommendations of Dr. Chase and Dr. Sinclair and Jessica Savala, I've had the opportunity to attend lunch meetings facilitated by Dr. Chase um, with, with guests such as the CFO of Paramount Pictures, Arthur Barron, who discussed his meandering path to success. And then also the VP of City National Bank, David L. Reagan, which directly relates to my uh, major of finance. And I love these meetings because they're, they're interactive discussion that focus on leadership, and they also give great advice to students. Another event that I was invited to by the University Honors Program was SDSU's Evening of Philanthropy. And what that is, it's an annual acknowledgment of our, of our generous donors, and it gives thanks to them. And so that's an intimate dinner gathering so I was seated at a table with many business leaders in San Diego, and we had great conversation. But what I love most was that these wealthy business leaders were actually more curious about our lives as students than we were about them. So it's a funny story. I was actually talking to Mark McMillan, who's the CEO of McMillan and & Sons. And he, he asked me what I like to do in my free time. And I talked about how I love to go dirt biking. I love the, I love the outdoors. It just so happens to be that he owns the most successful off-road racing team in the country. Yeah. <laughs> and he extended a personal invitation to me to go down to Baja, California to watch his team race and even be a part of it. And also, I sat next to Bill Lambden. He's actually the son of Charles Lambden, which the School of Accountancy is named after. And so I strive one day to be in their position to be able to give back to the university that made me who I am. Cool. And also, one of, the, one of the greatest moments of my life was meeting Dr. Paul Jacobs, the CEO of Qualcomm. Like Michaela, we were invited to a lunch discussion with him. Um, I asked him, what, what did he feel prepared him most for success? And he, I quote, said, make yourself constantly uncomfortable. He said to step outside your comfort zone, do things you wouldn't normally do. He discussed how when he was studying engineering, he actually studied electrical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering. So I'm sure that he would really approve of the interdisciplinary approach of the University Honors Program. And during his lecture, he discussed that his favorite quote was that there is no they. He said um, one should make, hold himself accountable and also that you shouldn't look for who's the blame. You should look for how to make it better and improve on it in the future. And so a journey I've yet to embark on is my study abroad session this summer in Oxford. It actually coincides with the London Olympics, so I'm extremely excited to be there to meet the requirement for the honors program to, to receive units actually for San Diego State. And I also look forward to being there and experiencing it with my best friend, Kyle, who I never would have met if it wasn't for the honors program. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me in the back? My name is Haley Stevens. I am a junior, so it is my third year in the Honors Program. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Honors Minor in Interdisciplinary Studies and Study Abroad. Uh, the Honors Minor is composed of 19 units, and nine of those units can also count towards GEs, which is really neat. And those are those really interactive, very engaging 
courses that we've been talking about. Uh, one of the courses I took was honors social psychology, which was very fun because we did a lot of breakout sessions and um, different interactive activities, and I met a lot of people and made friends that I probably wouldn't have stayed friends with if I was in a 500-person lecture hall. Uh, ten of the other units are those really unique courses that I have listed here, as well as some other unique courses, such as hip hop and religion and linguistics and politics, some courses that you probably wouldn't find otherwise, which really kind of expands on your education, gives you a well-rounded education expanding further than, you know, your focus major. And what I love about the minor is that it allows you, it sets you apart, basically. It's what gives me confidence that when applying to graduate school, I'll have a well-rounded education. And I also will have something tangible on my resume to not only account for you know, being an honor student and obviously having academic success, but having that well-rounded education we're talking about. And the minor actually works with all majors. I am personally a biology major. Uh, I'm also pre-med and have another minor in psychology. And you can actually have up to three majors and two minors. So, oh, and also the courses are not necessarily easier or harder than other courses. I, from my perspective, I think that they're, it's kind of just a different way of learning. It's, it's that engaging way of learning, being able to think outside the box and apply things towards the real world. The other requirements of the program, we talked about that 3.5 GPA. And then there's a senior capstone assignment, which is something, I think of these requirements more as benefits, honestly, because this is what I'm talking about, that I will be able to take with me when I graduate. That's going to make me a competitive applicant for graduate school, medical school, or wherever you'll be graduating from. Uh, the senior capstone assignments, you can choose from a thesis, a project, or a portfolio. And for example, if you choose the thesis, you actually, there's a um, six unit honors course. It's three units in the fall, three units in the spring, and that also counts towards your honors minor. And that prepares you to how to, you know, how to write a thesis, and you'll be able to publish it in the library, which is fantastic. And that's something that will be good for grad school as well, if you're seeing a trend. Um, the events and meetings are, it's a way to stay connected, like we said, and we'll be able to, you know, be really engaged with all the other honor students. And we do events, we do social, uh, social scholastic and service events. So, and there's something for everyone. There's a huge range of different events to choose from. You know, we talked about, we give credit for some of our big sporting events, and we also do, like we did to this year, a um, California Pizza Kitchen fundraiser, which was a fun social event. A lot of honor students attended. So we have some fun events. Definitely something for everyone. Oh, my favorite honors requirement is study abroad. <laughs> and I studied abroad in Florence, Italy, spring 2011. Now we're talking a lot about Italy because it's so amazing. Um, <laughs> I, decided to, I decided on Italy because I, I told you I'm a biology major, and there's definitely, especially through the resources in the honors program, um, our you know, specific honors advisor, uh, you can definitely find your major classes abroad, but I chose to do something completely different. I, I love my major, I love science, but I wanted to take a semester and just learn something completely different. So I chose Italy and I learned different things. I exposed myself to something completely different than I ever had before. Um, you know, I learned to appreciate art and I took wine tasting and ballet and I had just this indescribable experience that I, I can't even describe. Uh, <laughs> and I also did a lot of other traveling while I was in Europe. I not only had the experience, the opportunity to experience um, many different cultures, but I also was able to really reflect on my own culture and learn a lot about myself as a person. And you know, now I have a dozen or so best friends on the East Coast of all the students I study abroad with, and it was just a you know, very valuable experience for a new student. Um, <clears throat> I love studying abroad so much that I'm actually going again this summer. I'm going to Costa Rica to study Spanish. Uh, uh, something also available through the honors program is scholarships that are available for honor students in particular, which is a big help. Um, honors scholarships are very helpful. Um, <laughs> through study abroad, I was able to gain a new perspective. And um, like I said, I learned a lot about myself. And I think that really brings it back to the ideas of the honors program in general, which are to not only develop yourself as a student and gain a, you know, a very well-rounded interdisciplinary education, but to develop yourself as a person, to be a well-rounded person. And that's why the honors program is so important to me. 
Thank you. Hello, everyone. We're going to let you go outside soon, I promise. <laughs> All right, so um, my name is Shannon Clark. Um, I'm a junior here at San Diego State University um, and a political science major here. Um, sorry, I need the clicker. And I'm here basically to talk to you about um, ways that you can get involved in SDSU to give back not only to the All right, so the first thing I'd like to talk to you, talk to you about is um, the Honors Commitment to Sustainability, um, which has been headed um, I've really grown passionate about and have really fallen into in a number of ways. Um, number one, I'd like to talk about the new student union, which was, as mentioned earlier, is that ginormous construction site that you were dealing with on your way in. Um, but what you may not know about it is that if it is, when it is finished, it will be the first LEED Platinum student union in the country. Um, LEED Platinum is the highest uh, certi certi certification in sustainability that uh, a building can receive. And um, that is an initiative that was started by students, uh, pushed forward by students, and then eventually voted on by students. So it's pretty cool. Um, another thing that I'm a part of is the Green Campus Program, which focuses on sustainability through energy efficiency. And actually, the Honors Program helped me get an office um, within their Honors Lounge area. So if you guys are ever in there, stop by, say hi. Um, and one really cool initiative that we've been able to do through Honors Support has been build a bike that generates its own electricity. As you can see up there, there's a student riding it next to myself. And we actually try and be out at a weekly farmer's market every week with the bike. Um, and we also hook it up to a printer, so if you're willing to pedal you get free printing. <laughs> Not a bad deal. All right, and uh, so say that you want to get involved in not even if whether it's sustainability or any of the other initiatives on campus. Um, the University Pro Honors Program is here to help. If you walk into the Honors Lounge, every single door has a different person who is there to help you with either um, with mentoring, with studying abroad, with um, personal academic advising, or applying for scholarships. One resource that I really found useful and that I really took advantage of was the Office of Academic Scholarships, um, which uh, helps students in the Honors Program apply for national scholarships such as the Fulbright, the Rhodes, the Truman, which you may have heard of. Um, there's a couple, there's a couple uh, major benefits to scholarships. One, free money is awesome. And two, um, as you get into your upper, your upper division classes um, and your second or your third and fourth years of college, um, you start looking for things that'll, that'll really stand out on your resume and winning a national scholarship is certainly one way to do that. Um, one, the scholarship I applied for was the Udall National Scholarship. Um, it's a scholarship designed to give towards students um, who have led sustainable initiatives on their campus. Um, and uh, I was basically helped through the process step by step by the director of the academic scholarship and honors faculty. Um, one of my honors professors, actually the first honors class I ever took, um, wrote in a letter of recommendation for me. Um, Dean Chase wrote, a re read through my entire application before I sent it out and I, I gave countless drafts to the director of academic scholarship. So uh, I really did not feel alone in the process at all and uh, the honors program really helped me put forth the best application I possibly could. And then finally, um, one of the coolest programs that I've been a part of since my time in the Honors Program and in San Diego State University has been the Panetta Congressional Internship Program, um, which is led by Leon Panetta. And just a show of hands, how many of you know who Leon Panetta is? OK, yay. Um, well, for those of you who don't know, he is the Secretary of Defense. Prior to that, he was the director of the CIA. If it's still not ringing any bells, while he was director of the CIA, he was the guy that got Osama bin Laden. Um, hard to believe because he's so adorable, but, <laughs> but it's true. Um, and uh, the Panetta Congressional Internship Program, like I said, is run by him. And it takes one student from each of the California State Universities and sends them to Washington for, to live for a semester, fully paid, um, where they each intern for a member of the House of Repre for a member of Congress. Um, uh, it, was, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, and at this, at this campus, participation is only available to university honors program students. Um, as for my application, I was encouraged to participate by honors faculty and staff, and it was the honors program that really facilitated both my recommendation to go to this program and then my eventual, my eventual nomination. 
while I was there, um, it was perhaps one of, it was, it was an amazing experience. I, um, I had dinner at the Panetta's house, which is, this is their ranch right here and their dog in the background. Um, yeah. And uh, I had, I sat right next to him at dinner. I talked to him. I had, um, I met with William Daly, who is the former White House Chief of Staff in the Roosevelt Room of the White House, just me and a few other interns. I worked for Congresswoman Karen Bass, who was actually just came from State Assembly and was the first uh, female African-American woman to um, be Speaker of the California State Assembly. And uh, it, it was just a program, it was just a phenomenal experience. And as a political science major, allowed me the opportunity to really work directly with legislation um, and really engage with my, with my studies. Uh, and it's an opportunity that I never would have had if it was not for the University Honors Program. So thank you very much for your time, guys. Pretty phenomenal group of students, right? Yes, well, you guys could be here next year too, right? How many of the moms and dads, uh, since Michaela's story, is elbowing their, their uh, child saying, next year, I want you up there, right? All right, so how about we take a break? We're gonna go outside on the lawn and there's gonna ha we're gonna have some Rice Krispie treats and some cookies and coffee and lemonade. And then we'll get you back at 3.30. So we'll see you outside. <laughs>